Uh, this is Bill Schultz, historical writer at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I have with me today Don Hireman, member of the class of 1956. Don, thanks for right. joining me. My pleasure. Great. Hey, Don, tell me about your background. Where are you from? Well, I grew up in De Pere, West De Pere, Wisconsin, suburb of Green Bay, and uh, enjoyed growing up in a small community. It was only 5,000. Got to know the Green Bay Packers, my first name. Played the Green Bay Packer band when I was in high school and uh, enjoyed uh, uh, small community living. And so you went to, at, I bet you at that time it was just one to pure high school. Would you believe there were two? There were two. Town of 5,000 had uh, four Catholic grade schools, uh, two public high schools, a Catholic high school, St. Norbert High, okay. and St. Norbert College, all in that little town of 5,000. So I went to uh, Nicolay High, which is the West Pier High School, primarily because of um, music. I played trumpet in the band from the time I was nine years on, and uh, it was a very musically inclined uh, school. So we gave all the Gilbert and Sullivan operettas wow. in high school, little high school with, see we had 64 in a class, wow. so inter interesting, I still go to my class for unions there. I graduated at 16 in 1943. Wow. And we have a reunion every year. Oh, how great At our is. 50th, they said, how often do you think we should meet? I said, you know, I think the way this class is dying off, we ought to meet every year. The last 20 years, we've been meeting every year. Well, so, you've mm -hmm. always been a reunion guy. Oh, yeah, I guess so. And yeah. I am I am too. So, uh, mm -hmm. so from Saint, uh, from De Pere, which is now De Pere yeah. West, where did you go and do your undergrad? Well, I uh, was only, as I said, 16. I turned 17 a month after I graduated. So I went to St. Norbert for a year before I was 18. The World War II was on. Right. And so I, I took a year of ROTC and uh, took a year of pre-med at St. Norbert's. Then I enlisted in the summer of 44. I'd have been drafted anyway. And I uh, spent two years in the Army. So uh, while I was in officer candidate school in Fort Benning, Georgia, the war ended. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went overseas in December of 45, after the war ended, Army of Occupation, spent nine months touring Europe at Uncle Sam's expense, came home and went back to school. Mm -hmm. So from there I went to uh, UW-Madison for pre-med, got my bachelor's degree, okay. and then was called into the service during the Korean War. What, what year did you graduate from uh, Madison? Madison? 1950. You, you were there, Don, at the same time my dad came back from World War II sure. and finished his last three years at Madison. So. Isn't that something? Yeah, it's great. So from there, I went went in the Army again for two years. The summer of 40, what was that, 51, uh, they called up 50,000 lieutenants and captains. You had to stay in the reserve after mm -hmm. World War II. You were locked in. And uh, I was infantry OCS. So I got called back in, and that same year I got married. Had a report two years after marriage to wow. Katie. And uh, we spent two years. They transferred me to Medical Service Corps because I was a pre-med student. And when I got out, I came to Marquette Medical School, graduated in 56, right. and uh, interned at St. Joe's for a year. And the rest is history. It is, and you know, you're doing just what about everyone does. You're bringing me right through a number of my questions, but I do mm -hmm. wanna ask, a question I like asking people, when in your life did you realize that you wanted to be a doctor? When I was in high school, I remember asking my Latin teacher, Miss Beckman, Miss Beckman, do you think I can become, become a doctor? She said, Donald, you can be anything you want to be. She, was, she had all boys in her class because mm -hmm. we took advanced math and Latin, Miss Beckman. All, in those days, teachers were single. It was a profession for them. Mm -hmm. And she, we only had about seven guys in advanced math and stuff like that. But boy, she was a good teacher. And so I stuck with it. I admired our family doctor and the ear, nose, and throat guy that took care of me for my sinus infections. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a double ENT. In those days, the eye, ear, nose, and throat were born in both ophthalmology and otolaryngology. Okay. He trained at the Mayo Clinic, and I really admired him. Yeah. Wilson Troop. So those are my heroes. I enjoyed medicine, married that wonderful gal, Katie, 
we started having a family. By the time I graduated from med school, we had three kids. I, I, you know, <laughs> it's, it is very interesting. Three of us I, did. I've been hearing that story yeah. uh, from a number of the, the interviews that I've, I've done. And sure. So you were actually, even though you graduated high school early, yeah. by the time you started medical school, you would have... I was 25. I was going to say you're a little bit... 27, uh, yeah. A little mm -hmm. bit non-traditional. Yeah. Well, there were several in my class like that. John Tarl mm -hmm. had three kids when he graduated. Larry Enders, same way. And myself, those are the three I remember. We only had two women in our class. That's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. One was a nun and one wasn't. And uh, one Helen Vodapek is still what living is, with her husband. It, Ronnie Yates, one of them? Uh, That's the one. Okay. Veronica. Was she a, a sister when she was? She was okay. a nun, yeah. Mm -hmm. What did, you know, you're at Madison getting finishing your undergrad. Yeah. What prompted you to go to Marquette, Marquette. rather than UW-Madison? Well, Madison? it was a very strong Catholic family. And my father-in-law was very cl had close ties with Marquette. And Vic McCormick in Green Bay was a big, he donated Mar McCormick Hall to Marquette. Mm -hmm. So they wanted me to go to a Catholic medical mm -hmm. school, and it worked out fine. Just, uh, we had relatives in Milwaukee too, so a little more familiar with it. Yeah, and for married life especially. Yeah, no, that's great, and, and a lot of married students in your class mm -hmm. also. The um, the other uh, question that I enjoy asking because I get some uh, fun answers is certainly during your your time at at Marquette, as with any educational program, there is unique and interesting professors. Mm -hmm. Any any of the professors that you dealt with uh, in medical school that uh, you know kind of have stuck with you when you think about uh, that? Yeah, I loved uh, Dr. Kapus, K-A-P-U-S. He was our uh, microbiology uh, professor. And he, Kapus, he just had an accent and he was a very determined, well-liked, uh, interesting uh, professor that was in you know, undergrad, uh, preclinical. In clinical years, there were so many good ones. We enjoyed Francis D. Murphy, chairman of medicine. He was later chief of medicine at, at St. Joe's at the same time where I interned. And we just had more fun following him around on rounds because he had very interesting clientele. They came from all over to see Francis D. Murphy. Yeah, he's pretty famous. So he, he was, yeah. So uh, he stood out and then I had, uh, uh, Jack Klieger in OB at St. Joe's as an intern, and he was a wonderful guy. He was delivering like 600 babies a year or something like that. <laughs> a few stories we hear about Jack Klieger also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. And John Brennan and Bill Buggy, yeah. all the guys that later became close friends were already on the OB staff there. Well, that's, that's pretty mm -hmm. neat because a lot of the people you had a chance to associate with, uh, unfortunately, some of those people I actually got to meet during my career here at the college, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's great. Uh, the um, certainly, uh, and you kind of answered this already, but there was a lot going on between when you graduated from high school to when you actually started at uh, Marquette. Mm -hmm. uh, you already mentioned it. Uh, uh, you didn't have much of a choice. Uh, you know, you were you know you had to enlist or you would have been drafted, and then. Mm -hmm. You had no choice with the uh, being in the reserves. Nope, it was, uh, it was quite common then, so you, you accepted it. I was very fortunate, neither time did I get sent over into battle, whereas a lot of my friends that graduated with from Madison in 1950 got shipped over to Korea. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them got hepatitis, some got wounded or, or injured. And I was just very fortunate that I, the first base I went to in 51, right after we were married, the a division surgeon, a colonel, said, you know, you should be in the Medical Service Corps, not in the infantry anymore. So that's fine with me, Colonel. He, so he just transferred me just like that into the Medical Service Corps, even though I had no training in it. It turned out later on, I was actually running a dispensary without a doctor. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. It's very Obviously interesting. You, yeah. your, your aptitude from high school showed up with the, uh, with the colonel. I guess so, yeah. You know, you're... Um, your class of 1956, and I, as you know, I've worked with every class from 1945 to really even the most recent graduating class, but for reunions, the class of 2005. And probably from an active standpoint, your class of 56 was one of the most active with 
a large number of your classmates staying in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Um, over the years, uh, any uh, interesting stories or memories of, of some of those classmates who you've stayed so close with? Yeah, we really had a uh, closely knit group, as you said. Uh, we had a carpool, number one. I was married and lived out in uh, 2944 North 76th Street. We bought a little house because we were going to be there four years and that would be cheaper than renting, which it was. And I had three kids. I actually had uh, only one when I started med school. And, uh, but we've had them three years in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, and so John Walker, who you all well know, I have a still call my John very close friend energy. of mine. Yes. Jim Lee, who's out in San Diego, he went into radiology. And uh, uh, Dick Patterson, who went into psychiatry. Mm -hmm. We were in a carpool. And of course, we went to the old medical school on 15th Street, the Kramer Building. So we'd take turns driving. And it was a panic, you know, they didn't have the freeway or anything in those days. We were right zigzagging all the way through all these little suburbs. And uh, it was a riot. And of course, Dick Patterson was one that was always late. So we uh, had you a know, plan I, I, I would have, if you would have asked me which one, I probably would have said Dick. Having, yeah, you know knowing, knowing Dick, yes. Yeah. So but we remain friends all these years. I just talked to Jim about a month ago. I called him out in San Diego. In, regarding the class uh, reunion, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, John, I see all the time. We get together, he and Jenny. And uh, Don Chisholm's one of my closest friends and who ended up being my first partner in practice. I know. He, I, he told me that story sitting yeah. in that chair on uh, March 29th. Isn't that something? And he yeah. told me how he started off with you and then decided he wanted to do ophthalmology. Well, he got called to the service. Service yeah. first, and then he got interested in right. the yep. He was assigned to the eye clinic at Long Beach. Where we visited him too, so yeah. we've been together all these years. But he said, and of course, he said he totally enjoyed those years he worked worked with you. Oh yeah. You know, the, as long as we're on your class right now, sure. Your class has done something, and you know, you mentioned your high school reunions now every yeah. year. I'm a reunion guy. You, your class has had great class reunions. Oh yeah. But you guys get together every six months. Every six months. Yeah. When did that start? Oh, I would guess at least 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we get together for brunch at uh, Westmore. And uh, it, it's been a tradition. And we have a pretty good turnout. Yeah. Of course, the numbers are dwindling. Yeah. It's uh, a lot of widows there now. Yeah. Well, it's nice that but you've it's kept fun. them involved. We have another one coming up in May. Yeah. No, I know. I told mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my replacement, I said, you're lucky, Seth because you've got the class of 1956 coming in for another reunion. Because yeah. that'll help the numbers. They always have good good sure. turnouts. Yeah, we do have those three funds, too, that the school had, that right. our class has. Mm -hmm. That humanities fund. Yep. Those humanities lectures are well attended. Mm -hmm. They are. And um, now they, I know we're, we'll be going over the top for our goal uh, for our class gift this time, too. We have the endowed fund for mm -hmm. scholarships. Anyhow, my classmates were just fantastic. Al McGillis and, and uh, the other uh, three that I mentioned. And um, just a great group of people. Bill Reifenrath recently yeah. died. Yeah, he was in that same group. And uh, John Shika and Stan Kenwood. Just really solid people. So, yeah, and we, we interact in a lot of meetings and stuff like that. And of course, the other big thing was our class reunions, or I should say our clinical conferences every year, they were so well attended. Uh, surprisingly, with a large number of alumni, it's still a small group, but we, we always hope to get 90 to 100 people. Yep. And we bonded so much, you know, there's just uh, different class years got together for tennis, golf, and uh, socializing. Well, I met you uh, mm -hmm. for the very first time when I started my job. They used to do a little one in the fall. Right. I met you uh, in one that was up in Napa Valley, and uh, as we've talked about you, I think both Mike Bolger and I golfed with you as the first alumnus that we golfed with, different times, Right. but we both golfed with you the first time we ever golfed with an alumnus. So. Right. First time I golfed with Mike was at, uh, is it called Inverness? Mm -hmm. It's Tarpon Springs, Florida, and uh, he and I, and I think uh, Jerry Stanley, Mm -hmm. I don't know if Don Chisholm was in that foursome or not, but he always says that I've tolerated his first round with him. I, I was just 
actually, as you were telling that, thinking that when I golfed with you, as lousy a golfer as I am, you were extremely tolerant. Well, I wasn't a very good golfer either. <laughs> that was at Silverado. It was at Silverado. Yeah, at that time, I was still uh, engaged to Patricia. We hadn't been married yet. Yeah. Yeah. But that was a nice place, wasn't it? All I know is, is that was about three weeks before my, my bypass. So oh. you're, you're lucky you didn't have to do any work on me on the golf course. You're lucky, yeah. Now, tell me, I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you, we, we talked earlier about, you know, jumping from uh, your, uh, you know, medical school to your residency. Mm -hmm. Tell me again, where did you do your residency? Actually, in those days, at Family right. Medicine, we took an internship, right. and then they didn't have family practice residency. They were just starting them. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my goals uh, when I, I got into politics and medicine. And I got involved, really, when I added a partner from South Milwaukee by the name of Howard Klopf, K-L-O-P-F. Mm -hmm. He was in family medicine on the south side, and... Uh, he was, wasn't very happy with his partner. And so our professional management guy, Norm Wachtel from Professional Management of Milwaukee, who took care of all these friends of mine mm -hmm. uh, for their bookkeeping and accounting and so on, said, Howard, why don't you join Don Hire Me? He's uh, trying to add people to the clinic. And uh, so Howard joined me. And Howard was the secretary treasurer of the Wisconsin Academy of Family Physicians. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't have a family practice department here. Madison had one for years, mm -hmm. was doing a great job. And uh, I think they had four residencies started already. So Howard joined us and he got me involved in it along with Bob Herzog, who was their mm -hmm. executive director right. too. And the next thing you know, I was secretary treasurer of <laughs> the Wisconsin <laughs> Academy. And within a couple of years, I was president of the mm -hmm. Academy. So we worked with David Carley to get the Department of Family Medicine started here. Yeah, what year, and I know you, you, you know, I did not until we talked last week, mm -hmm. I didn't know that you were that, um, you know, important Involved. in setting up a family practice uh, program here. Yeah, yeah I, I was just uh, fortunate in being here at the right time. And David Carley's son-in-law was one of my doctors that I'd okay. hired, Mark Olson, who had run the family practice uh, program at St. Mike's before he joined me. And that was the only uh, family practice residency in Milwaukee. Yeah. And so... Do you remember uh, the year, Don? Was that like in the 60s, like the late 60s, early 70s? I would say early 70s, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. And uh, so it was uh, really fortunate because we would look at the residents there to, to get them to join our group. Right. And I was very fortunate in getting Jerry Stanley. Yep. And then my own son Dan took a residency right. there and uh, joined us. And uh, by that time we had expanded the medical college, got their uh, their department started, and I say Carly helped a lot, just like he told him, I'll get you the money for the med new medical college as president, both from the state and the feds. Right. Did the same thing for family medicine because he admired Mark, his son-in-law, yeah. so much. Well, it must have been having a, a guy who is attuned to politics like Doc, well, like Carly. Oh, to, yes. To uh, a good, good person at the right time. He was, yeah. The, um, so that's what happened. So after internship, I really wanted to go into either OB or surgery. Mm -hmm. And I didn't decide, so I thought Bill Dolman Jr. was very popular at St. Joe's, and he delivered a lot of babies there, and I delivered a lot of the, his babies with him. He said, Don, won't you come out to Menominee Falls? And Because I want to leave. He was practicing with his dad. He said, well, I have to go into anesthesia because I can't take this. It's really a rat race. I come home from dinner, and I'll have 40 phone calls waiting. Mm -hmm. They only had four doctors in their group, and his father had had a heart and attack. And this, this was the beginnings of the Falls Medical Group. Yeah, his dad had had set up a uh, small clinic there, and Bill made him expand it, added a couple more rooms. There were only four exam rooms for four doctors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he had one exam room. The waiting room was like eight by twelve. Wow! People would line up out in the street wow. to get in, and uh, there were only four doctors in town. And uh, were they were you all the, were you the Schlamer, fifth? Deworth, my uh, Bill Doman's dad, and uh, another guy who was uh, homeopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. So it, they really was a shortage of doctors. The town was the most rapidly growing suburb, or uh, actually village in the country. Mm -hmm. It went from 5,000 to 10,000 within about, you know, five years. And what, when did you start in? Uh, 1957. Okay, so right away. Right away, right and, out of and, uh, and internship. I, I, I joined uh, Bill Doman Sr. 
and he just worked part time. And within a year, uh, I could see he and I were alone. Well, I already had added uh, Bill uh, Don Chisholm, and I said my accountant, you have to buy him out because he'll never let you expand. And we wanted to add doctors and become right. multi-specialty and so on. By that time, Colonel Rothermel had approached me and said, "Dr. Hireman, you're my only hope." He said, the doctors in town don't want to help me start a hospital, and we need one very badly. And he was right. It was too hard to get into St. Joe's and County and so on. Mm -hmm. We had an emergency, and the only hospital in the county at that time was Waukesha Memorial. Long way. He didn't have Elmbrook. He didn't have any of the wow. other hospitals. So he said, okay, I'll, I'll help you, but we're going to have to recruit doctors because four doctors can't build a hospital. By the time we opened in 1964, we had 13 doctors. Wow. Thanks to medical associates right. finishing their training at County and well, you're uh, out. so. In other words, not only did you lead and expand the clinic, yeah. but help start community memorial hospital. I was hospital. appointed the first chief of staff by the board wow. because I worked with them for four well years before we finally established a medical staff and, I did, and I, built the hospital. I did not. I did not know that. I yeah. I learned something new with all these interviews. Oh yeah. And you were, um, and Community Memorial now is uh, tied in with us oh, here at the college. Big, big hospital. We have one of the best heart programs in the country. Right. And uh, just a fine group of people that, and Freighter has made a good choice when they moved in on Don't us. they do mm -hmm. much of the orthopedic stuff up uh, at Community Memorial also? Well, Some of the knees they and do, and... but they're all Freighter people now. Yeah, right. Yeah, Aurora has required our orthopods to go to their oh, orthopedic okay. clinics. But anyhow, it was a, a, a great thing. By the time I got going, I had three of my classmates in my group. Don Chisholm, mm -hmm. and he stayed until he got called into the service. Ken Harrington came a yep. year and a half later. And later on, uh, Ralph Burnett mm -hmm. uh, came, and he was with us a few years, but later on moved back to Kenosha, his hometown, and took over a family practice clinic there. Well, I, I know visiting mm -hmm. you up there in, in the mid-'90s, uh, what a large beautiful clinic and you practiced uh till until not that long ago. Was 50, i practiced 50 years and six months okay so i just retired at december 30th of 2007. wow that's only eight years ago well i think and uh, i will be 90 in may in june june 7th i'll be 90. you are you are definitely uh no bs here from the guy with his initials that are bs but you yeah. got to be in the best shape no, of any, any 90 year old I had I've a ever... BA instead of a BS, <laughs> BA and an MD. Yeah. And I have a, a BS and an MS, but oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but you are in such great shape, and I, I have no doubt that you could walk right back into an exam room, and probably, you know, pick I right thought up. it, I thought it would be horrible to retire, but it was good. It was a perfect time to retire. I spent more time with my family yeah. and with Patricia and and uh, golfing and what right. have you. So well, tell mm -hmm. me, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I mean the helping to start the hospital, you know, expanding that clinic so much. Any other career, high, and st helping to start the family medicine program here yeah. at the Medical College of Wisconsin, any other career highlights that, that you'd like to share Walter with Walter Zeit Executive Committee. Dorit Lepley called uh, George Corcoran, myself, and uh, Bob Ousman to start that, uh, the, the Walter Zeitz. He really liked, uh, Walter Zeit, obviously, his old anatomy professor. He was down at St. Luke's, because mm -hmm. that's where the heart program was. And uh, in honor of his uh, alma mater, he wanted to start this fundraiser, and we did. It was very interesting. The first time he started, our dues were, initiation fee was $250. <laughs> <laughs> then once it's... we got organized, uh, unfortunately, he died of lung cancer, not mm -hmm. metastatic to the brain, not too long after. And so George Corker did a heroic job in being our chairman and expanding it. We all had to go out and recruit. Mm -hmm. So I got Walker and Chisholm and Ray and Arnie Nesser, business mm -hmm. friends of mine, and uh, the radiologist at the hospital. Um, uh, what's her name? Ness Wenham. Yes. And uh, they're nice. Uh, She's promoters a member of the of class of 1977. Mm -hmm. And her husband, John. John's a great guy. They donated a lot to the medical college, too. But anyhow, we all had to just go out and recruit. Our goal was to get 10 new members. In the beginning, we finally got them. And then we raised the initiation fee to 10 grand. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just grown like topsy, you know. Now it's 25,000. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. And you have a nice, nice uh, event every year. Right. Thanking everybody. And you've got the Back then we only had 88 members in 84. This is only our second recognition dinner. We didn't have a dinner every year in the beginning. We just had a party, you know. But uh, George would entertain us out at his place in uh, Palm Springs, Morningside, and even at his home here at, uh, in Elm Grove. Uh, he just kept that kept the ball rolling until we got big enough to have if, it at the country know, if club. You're, if you'd be willing, you should let me take that. Sure. And what I'll do is I'll make a copy, Yeah. and then I'll send it back to you. That'd be great. Yeah, no, that'd be super. That's sure. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, well, the, That was the big thing, I think. The Walter Zeitz were the key fundraising group, and I got to meet every president and dean <laughs> of the medical school that way, starting way back uh, before um, Ed Lennon was even involved. And um, Ed and uh, Jan became close friends. Uh, Ray and I used to rent a limo. We'd pick up Ed and Jan <laughs> because he had a little disability towards yeah. the end there to go to the go to the Zeit dinners. Just saw Jan last week. Yeah, I see. Yeah, she was in with Vera Wilson. She's still very active. Oh, isn't she? yeah, just mm -hmm. so active. That's uh, terrific. Yeah, she's been in when Walt Gager was doing these interviews. She was interviewed, but. I thought her her interview was too short, okay. so I'm going to ask her to come back in and do more. Good, good. Yeah. You, you know the mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about because you'd already graduated. However, you were so active with the uh, the school and your you know uh, there was a you know 1967 Marquette decided they couldn't afford the medical school, so right. ties were severed. Mm -hmm. Three years private medical school Marquette School of Medicine, mm -hmm. and then 1970 the name was changed. Just mm -hmm. curi out of curiosity, what were your thoughts? Because you know, during that time, because you got you know some big changes. Plus, mm -hmm. there was a uh, uh, certainly the school financially was having some challenges after Marquette. So I'm just curious about your thoughts yeah. about that time frame. Well, it was about like the uh, uh, dropping the name of the Marquette Warriors <laughs> to the Golden Eagles. Yeah. That sentiment, you know, you had the friction, yeah. but it wore off. And uh, the Medical College of Wisconsin was a good name, and they were able to attract uh, federal grants and stuff that they couldn't if they were a Jesuit-run school. So there was a good reason for it. Yeah. And I think Marquette was losing a million dollars a year when they decided they couldn't afford it any longer. Yeah, it, yeah, it was a, a certainly an interesting time. I, uh, I mean, the discussion, it's amazing. I mean, here you and I are in 2000, and, 16, we're approaching, what, 50, 50 years after the fact. Yeah. And yet we're still, you know, we still talk about it. But, sure. uh, but it's pretty well gone now because of the age of the alumni that were involved. And, you know, most have been, like you, Don, yeah, most, most have been real, so excited about what the growth of this place has oh, been yeah. that every, everyone's back on board. Absolutely. And have been for years. Sure. And I think mm -hmm. Mike Bolger was a big part of that, too. Oh, he was fantastic, yeah. Great at uh, mending wounds and yeah. uh, did a great job. No, he's a, Guys he, like Jack Fed, Frederick. Yep. And just so many great people involved. Yeah. No, it's been, it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great place. Uh, you know, and I've been fortunate to, to know you and, and work with you for over 20 years as a tremendous alumni volunteer. You've served as president of the Alumni Association. You are a member of the Board of Trustees. You're a clinical, you were or still are a clinical professor. You lead your class reunions. You're a member and have helped found the Walter Zeit Fellowship. You received the Alumni Association's Distinguished Service Award. You've participated in dozens of events. What, what has inspired you to stay involved all these years with your alma mater? Uh, number one, I enjoyed being involved with the school because I taught students in my clinic. And uh, George Thiel was chairman of medicine at the time. They were looking for clinical professors, and he called me. He said, Don, would you take some students, you know, for ambulatory medicine? I said, sure. He said, okay. He made me an associate clinical professor in internal medicine, even though I had any residency at all, because we didn't have a department of family practice. Right. So I had that, and then when we got our own department of family medicine, I, I got my appointment in that. But I, seven of my former medical students became partners wow. in my group. That's not including bad. our CEO, John Conkle, sure. one of the brightest orthopedic surgeons in the, in the country, and uh, did a great job of leadership, you know. And, of course, Mark Olson, he 
he wasn't one of my students, however, but um, Ray Zastro Jr. is another yeah, one. Sure. Who became the head of Quad Med. Yep. And just really fantastic wow. people. Yeah, you've been a, so, a real player when it comes to this this medical school. I was selfish. Hey. I was able to speak <laughs> that talent into my group. Yeah, yeah but you know, it, what the heck? I mean, that's, you know, that's part of the deal, you know, train them yeah. and then bring them into your group. Uh, yeah. You know, um, the, you know, you've been so involved through your whole career up until just, uh, you know, eight, nine years ago with, with teaching. From when you graduated in 1956, what do, you, what do you see as the biggest change in medical education to today? Well, there's been a huge change since computers have entered the, the arena, you know. You know, when you think back when we've been in school, we had a copy notes and it was a real chore to hear the professors sometimes or what have you. And now, they don't even have to go to class sometimes. They just get it all off of, of the internet. And it's, it's an entirely different form of teaching. And it's all for the better because it can absorb so much more knowledge and be exposed to so much more and be able to retain it right in their own laptop or their own computer yep. that it's fantastic. My granddaughter just graduated from Bethesda, Maryland. The, the medical school out there that's associated with the military. And uh, fantastic school of medicine. And she was always on the, the internet, you know. I was just mm -hmm. amazed how, how many things they were exposed to in her four years there. Wow. Yeah, no, it's, it's certainly changed a lot. And you've, you know, you've been not only, you know, as a, as a clinical professor teaching students, uh, you've had, you know, there aren't a lot of alumni that have had three children go through and become that's true alumni mm -hmm. and you've got uh, your three sons uh, mm -hmm. uh, that went through three between sons, 19 a niece a nephew and uh, a granddaughter now okay and did uh, okay I've either Kurt Dan Kurt and Tom and Dan and Dan yeah Kurt's the pediatrics up in Appleton he was my first born our clinic was too small to have a pediatrician mm -hmm. and we had one he didn't want competition <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, Tom went into ophthalmology, he's in mm -hmm. the group, and Dan's in family medicine. Yeah. They're both very, very busy at my clinic. Yeah. So it's, it's really Oh, that's good. great. You've had a, just a, a wonderful, wonderful career. And you know, I really appreciate you coming in. And it's been, uh, it's, I'm going to continue working with you, but Well, you've been so a much. great guy. You were the best successor to Bob Herzog we could have picked, that's for sure. <laughs>